Some things in football are pretty much impossible. Fulham fans, imagine finishing in the Champions League spot. And that's no dig. Be honest. Imagine finishing the Champions League spot. Today, I've got a tactic which will take you there. Yes, welcome to the Omega Luke Gaming Channel. Today we're going to look at a very incredible tactic made, of course, by Ryan Cassidy. I know a couple of weeks ago, or maybe last week, we had Olivier's tactic, which you all absolutely loved, the three-pronged attack. But, of course, Ryan Cassidy, he doesn't take breaks. This man just churns out tactic after tactic. We've seen a lot of his phantom menace, uh, and now we have his new rendition of a tactic for Football Manager 2021. But before we get into that and I show you what the tactic is, please remember, viewers, if you want to download this tactic, it is in the Discord. Please stop writing comments saying, where's the link in the description? It's in the Discord. Join the Discord. I keep saying it in the videos and nobody listens. And while you're down there as well, there is also a link to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash Gaming. if you want to watch some live Luke. We are in the youth to gold, viewers. I'm enjoying myself, and I know a lot of you are enjoying that save too, so come on over, drop me a follow. And of course, we still have 76% of you. That number is not decreasing. Who are not subscribed to the channel, so if you can please press that subscribe button. Let's go on into the video. I don't want to waste any more of your time, viewers. And I was not lying to you. Here we are, this is Fulham. In the Champions League spot, 68 points throughout the whole season. What I actually found quite remarkable is the fact that both Fulham and Leeds finished in 4th and 5th in this league campaign. Chelsea there in 6th place, Tottenham in 8th. It was quite remarkable, if you ask me, and that's also quite remarkable. If you ask me, Ruben Loftus-Cheek scored 35 goals in this tactic, viewers. I will tell you the position and everything once I have a look at the rest of the results. But that is just baffling. 31 goals in the league in 36 games. 31. Seven assists as well. So he actually had more goal contributions in the league than he, hit, he did games. He probably is going to be a Ballon d'Or winner, viewers. A 7.3 average rating. I mean, Loftus-Cheek's good. He's not that good. Well, he is actually quite good. Maybe if you're playing as Fulham, you should play him as a striker. That is actually quite impressive. So it's no surprises that he did win the the, uh, the golden boot for the Premier League season by 10 goals as well. Quite remarkable. And Fulham find themselves in Champions League qualification next season. Uh, Adebar, Ad, Adirab, Biop, this player... Uh, was in the highest average rating, a 7.5 average rating. But let's look at the team overview. We can see here they scored the second amount of goals in the league campaign in behind Liverpool, which is quite, it's not exactly a bad thing at all, is it? Few is conceded. We find ourselves in eighth position there and most clean sheets in eighth position. So the results, viewers, if we have a look at some of the results, Bashed out some friendlies, my word. Uh, of course, Ryan Cassie makes sure these tactics are thorough. There are some freak results, viewers. There are some freak results. I'm not going to pull the wool over your eyes. There has been some amazing results and been some very bad ones in this tactic. And it's about weighing that up. We lost 5-0 here. Okay, we lost 5-0 to Sheffield United. Should never have happened, really. But we also lost 5-1 to Leeds. However, the next game... We won 5-2 against Tottenham and then followed that up with a 2-0 victory against Manchester United. So it is very weird, but overall in the league campaign, we had a very good season. And I think once the team started... And we had a bad patch there. A very bad patch there. Once the team started picking up, look how good they, this season could have been. If you get a couple of wins in there, look how good this season could have been. Another win over Manchester United. Another win over Tottenham. Crystal Palace being 4-1. In the last game of the season, viewers, we beat the champions of Liverpool with a 2-0 victory as well. So there is different results in there, but in the grand scheme of things, that does not matter when you finish in fourth place. Fourth place, and I'm actually curious now. We've got to see the past positions, where they were throughout the league campaign. So we were in third place for a long time. In that very last game of the season as well, viewers, that's what bumped us up into the Champions League spots. So that's good. A couple of wins at the end of the season gave us Champions League football. You'll love to see it. Once I do show you the, uh, how this tactic is and everything like that and all the player instructions, 
Stay put because we also have some other results which you're going to find quite amazing. Which if you're so, sort of unsure about this tactic might persuade you to uh, to definitely look more into it. And it kind of works with both the elite level clubs and the underdog teams. As you can see Fulham they are definitely an underdog team. We will have a look at an elite level club and sort of a sub elite as well. I've got a team for you there. So we've got four teams in total to look at today. But first, we'll take a look at the tactic. And so this is the tactic. It is a 4-4-2, viewers. Back to basics. That's what we like. Uh, we can see here some very attacking play on the wings, though. Both wingers on attack and both complete, complete wingbacks on attack as well. We have a centre forward on support, a complete forward sorry, on support with Mitrovic, who did score quite a lot of goals as well. Uh, 15 goals in total this season. We've seen his name pop up a couple of times there, picking up a brace. And Ruben Loftus-Cheek played in this advanced forward role, which is the reason why he scored that many goals. This is a player instruction, so you can see some added ones on here as well. A lot of added ones on the Mitrovic one, uh, on the wingers, and the centre... Oh, God, I hate it when it does this. Maybe I need to take off. I need to, I need to clear them. I need to clear them so we can see it. There we go. This is going to be a lot easier now, viewers. Click, please. Mouse, click. There we go. Right, the advanced playmaker in the midfield there with the box-to-box -box midfielder. This is the reason why I think the underdog team had some freak results as well as obviously getting some really good results because if they are overrunning you in midfield, maybe they are playing three or four in the midfield, that's where you might struggle. But it still produced really good results overall in the league campaign. Box-to-box -box midfielder there. The other winger, exactly the same as that side. Complete winger on attack. Both sides. We have a ball playing defender, stopper, and a ball playing defender, defend. That's the combination that I like to see. A sweeper keeper, viewers, rounds this off on a support role. We have an attacking mentality. Most of Ryan Cassidy's tactics are because it produces the best results. Don't invite the pressure. Give them the pressure. In possession, we can see we are overloading these wings here, viewers, of overlaps and focusing the play. Playing out of defence. We're working the ball into the box with that low crosses. Attacking width is wide. Slightly more direct, extremely high tempo. We're running up the defenders, viewers. Never time wasting, not yet. Anyway, passing the ball into space. In transition is a Gagan press. Distributing the ball quickly to the flanks and with short kicks. Out of possession, though, we are using the offside trap, using tighter marking. High line of engagement, high defensive line. Extremely urgent pressing intensity. Preventing the short goal kick distribution and staying in our feet, viewers. And when we are defensive, we are forcing the play out wide. We are forcing them outside. We are bringing ourselves narrow and not inviting the pressure through the midfield of our, well, in the middle of our pitch. We're forcing them out wide, getting them to make crosses, and that's when we're defending the ball. Corners, I will quickly go over corners here. You can see it is exactly the same as what Ryan Cassidy likes to do because it produces the best results. And free kicks, I'd imagine, are exactly the same as that, as well as the throw-ins. If we look at attacking throw-ins, this is very bog-standard Ryan Cassidy. That's what we like to see. So remember, if you want to download the tactic in the Discord, okay? If you leave a comment... I will dislike it, saying link. Where's the link? I will dislike the comment. Right, so the second team we are looking at today is Real Betis, or Hispalas, as some people have because they haven't done the name fix. Anyway, I've done the name fix. They finish in third place, viewers. Joint second, really, if you consider it. Obviously, the head-to-head uh, -head is the reason why they did not finish above Barcelona, but I will show you something. Um, Ryan Cassidy actually started this tactic when he was doing the testing, using it himself for a long time. And we're going to show you where he was when he was actually doing that. And obviously how disappointing it is that it dropped off once he started, when he, once he stopped controlling it, which just goes to show how vital the human touch is and add in opposition instructions, reading the game while you're in the game, that kind of thing. And obviously picking the players when they are not as fit. Whereas obviously when you holiday it, they just pick the players however you choose to pick him. Besides the point, Nabil Fakir scored 54 goals, viewers. That's a high amount. That's a pretty higher amount. Uh, so, so, we look at the lead table here. Um, some really good results here. Seven losses in total. Uh, one to Barcelona, one to Real Madrid. I imagine we drew against Barcelona then. We did. That's the reason why they had the head-to-head. -head. But look at these draws, by the way. All scored draws. The lowest one was a 1-1. We had four 2-2s, a 5-5 against Granada, and a 4-4 against Barcelona. 
a little bit bad defending viewers. We could be second. We could be second there. So that's unfortunate. Anyway, we look at the stats though. We scored the most goals by a country mile viewers. Over 20 goals higher than the second team, Barcelona. So it just goes to show with a subpar team or a mid-table team like Real Betis, you can still produce insane results with this tactic. With an underdog like Fulham, they're going to struggle to score on the amount of goals that Batiste are or the elite level team is going to. But there we go, still scoring a lot of goals. The fewest conceded, we can see we're not in that top eight. All the clean sheets, we're also not in there, but we are conceding way more. Well, we are we are scoring way more than we are conceding because else we wouldn't be in the situation that we are in third place. If we do look at that, Nabil Fakir actually scored 49 goals, viewers, in 38 league games. 49. And he still didn't even get the highest average rating, which is remarkable, to be fair. He did get the most uh, uh, amount of the matches, though, with 10. And Joaquin, I mean, Joaquin, it's like 39 years of age, and he's still got 18 assists. That is incredible. Fair play to him. The season preview does show here that Real Batis are a mid-table side, finishing in ninth place. But if we do look at the past positions, viewers, with Ryan Cassidy controlling them, they were top for a very long time. For such a long time. And I do believe he said he stopped playing them round about De November, De December. So this is round about this period. That's when they dropped off. They picked it back up again, picked it back up again. And that's when they dropped off into third place. Toyed around with second for a little bit and unfortunately ended in third. And just to show you exactly that, look how long he went before they eventually lost the game to Alaves of all teams. Some crazy results here. A 10-0 win in the Copa del Rey. 5-0. They beat Real Madrid 3-2. Huesca 4-0 there. Some, cr some incredible results, really, when you consider it. Had a little bit of a rough patch here at the end of January. Had another little... Uh, inconsistent patch around here, but never a bad period. Never a bad period. Those three games there are against good sides, really. So I don't really class that as a bad period. Associated Atletico Madrid, Atletico Madrid draws. And that's not bad. Sevilla can be a tricky team. They've also got Manuel Ugate, by the way, the midfield general. 4-1 loss. If they managed to get a result out of any of them, better than what they did, they finished in second place. They ended with a 3-1 victory against Valencia. An easy, dominant win. And that's where they finished, viewers. Third place. So let's look at this team report. You can see by this, the XG per game was one of the highest that you will ever see. Uh, Scoring-wise, if we do look here, very aggressive and very clinical in a bit of a league of our own out here. So that's fantastic. Uh, the goals came thick and fast. 100 goals around the penalty spot. You can see where they were around that. 99 of them were play shots. Majority of them probably Nabil Fakir. The assist wise, this is where the assist has come from. Finally, it's fixed, viewers. Thank you so much, FM Gods. Uh, we can see. So that's also absolutely fantastic. Formations, 100% of the formations were exactly this tactic, okay? Just in case anyone thought we had changed it. No. That's what it was. Conceded though, viewers. Conceded, we were busy and leaky. So that is the only problem with this tactic. It's just on the cusp of quiet and leaky, but they are still classing it as busy and leaky. So we have looked at the underdog team. We have looked at the mid-table team. Let's look at a sub high team in AZ Alkmaar. Of course, they have a couple of teams who are most likely to finish above them in Ajax and PSV. And they, of course, have the likes of Feyenoord, who can be quite tricky in their league. They do, however, have a very good time with this tactic. They win the league viewers by 10 points in total. So they absolutely dominated the league and they only lost one game to Ajax, which was a 3-4 loss. So for a sub-high team, this tactic seems to be very powerful indeed. 89 points, 63 goal difference. And let's have a look at some of the stats here. They scored the most goals by, well, not as many as what we've seen in Real Betis, but they still scored the most goals. Uh, they also, let's see, fewers conceded they were second. Most clean sheets, they were fourth place. So higher than what it was for the mid-table and sub 
table teams. Uh, let's look at the profile. I want to see if we had the top score. We did. Carlson was a top score. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, hey, where's Boadu? Well, Ryan Cassie did message me about this. He said the reason why Carlson scored the most goals is because Boadu was the centre forward, the complete forward. If that was swapped, we would have probably have seen Boadu score the most goals. So whoever you think has the best scoring, maybe put here. Whoever you think has maybe the bestest Best chance of getting assists, maybe put in that complete forward role. Uh, I don't know whether Ryan Cassie would have preferred to have, have switched them around, but Carlson here still managed to score the most goals throughout the whole league campaign with 29, which is still an extremely high amount considering, I mean, how many games did he actually play? Considering he only played 32 games, he still scored 29 goals and got himself 9 assists. This is still really good for the era Divisi. Uh, Coop Myers got the highest average rating, as well as the most player of the matches. Where did he play? I can't remember where he played. He was, there's tactic. He played in centre-back role. He played in the centre-back role. So I didn't know whether he'd be midfield or centre-back. He played the centre-back role and he did outstanding in that role. Boadu still scored a good, good, good amount, by the way, viewers. 25 goals in the season, 30 overall, and got himself 8 assists, 7 assists in the league campaign. So don't think just playing him in that role means they won't score any goals. Just probably not as much as the advance forward. Finally, we are looking at the very high team in the league, the best in the league. And we can see with Rangers... I know that's going to be very controversial. With Rangers as the best team in the league, they are at the minute, as we are currently speaking, I think they have a better team, viewers. Uh, they won it by 101 points. They didn't win the league by 100. They got 101 points. By the way, viewers, I don't think I mentioned, this tactic is called the Burning Hammer tactic. So when you are asking for this tactic, look for the Burning Hammer, okay? I'll probably put it in the, uh, the, the thumbnails just so you can see for reference because I know a lot of people are not going to get to this point. That's fair. Um, not as many goals for the top scorer. Not as many. Just 20 goals. But look how spread out the amount of goals are. Even Jermaine Defoe from a sub from the sub bench got 19 goals, to be fair. Uh, Alfredo Morelos only played 20 games, even though he was starting. I'm wondering whether he had some kind of big injury, viewers. Let's see. He was out for five months. Bro broken leg against Kilmarnock. Alfredo Morelos... Look how many goals he would have scored as well. He scored 16 goals in 17 appearances in the league. This could have been worse. This could have been a lot worse for the rest of the teams. Anyway, this would have been fantastic for Rangers. But still, there we go. Uh, 101 go uh, points. Only lost one game to Dundee. They drew five, both against Celtic. One against Motherwell, one against Kilmarnock. Probably when they broke uh, Alfredo Morales' leg. But they dominated the stats here. The assists... Uh, Haji and Beresic getting on the assist there. Some good attributes for those in those roles. So that's fantastic, really. If we do have a look at the team overview, of course they scored the most goals, 118. The next was Celtic on 77. Uh, most shots, they got a lot of shots in on goal. The fewest conceded, they were second again. They are conceding quite a lot still, but nowhere near as the amount as any other team. Rangers there with the most, well, the second most clean sheets with 16. Celtic with the most. So what do you think of this tactic, viewers? What do you make of it? I like the 4-4-2. It does leak a lot of goals, but it does show here. If you are one of the sub-elite or the elite teams, then you will dominate the leagues. If you are one of the underdogs, yes, you might leak and have a few freak amount of results, but you're still going to do really well. I mean, fourth place, not one of these teams finish outside of the top four. Fulham finish at the Champions League spots, which is just quite remarkable, to be honest. So I really like this tactic, the Burning Hammer tactic. A 4-4-2, which is quite overpowered, very attacking. I think, viewers, if you want to have some fun with your save and still do well, this is the perfect tactic because you are going to score a lot of goals. You are going to concede a lot of goals. You're going to have a lot of interesting games. This is an incredible tactic for you to have some very interesting games in. And there we have it. Thank you very much for watching the video. Thank you to Ryan Cassidy once again for providing the goods on a very good tactic. You can find it again in the Discord. Discord. D-I-S-C-O-R-D. Please don't ask me for the link in the description. That's where you can find it. The link is in the Discord under Ryan's Tactics. You can also download any other Ryan's Tactics in there. Olivier's Tactics in there as well. As well as Snook's training schedules. Not to mention I'll let you know when I go live on Twitch.tv forward slash Megaloop Gaming or I let you know when the videos are out 
on the YouTube channel, you will get a notification for all of that. So please join the Discord. It is well worth your time. If you haven't done so already, please smash the like button. Please press the subscribe button as well. We're now on route viewers to 15,000 subscribers. Happy days. Massive thank you to everyone who managed to get me over the line on 10,000 subscribers before Christmas. I love you all and I'll see you very soon. Happy New Year viewers. Bye bye.